since 2013, guys. While we still don't have flying cars, teleportation, or time travel, the future is now. And I want to highlight just a few technologies that have been calibrated, perfected, and have paved a way toward a reality where science fiction has become fact. Starting with DARPA's pet proto robot, a humanoid robot capable of recreating common tasks all with superhuman ability. And what about the mind controlled prosthetic arm developed at the University of Pittsburgh? With enough practice, this robotic extremity is capable of performing complex tasks, all controlled by electric signals created in the brain. There's also the bionic eye, a revolutionary procedure that consists of a retinal implant that could restore eyesight to the blind. A procedure that was once only a dream actually has FDA approval right here in the U.S. I can't leave out the robotic exoskeleton, a bodysuit straight out of a science fiction movie that can give paraplegics a new lease on life or give the average person more than average abilities. And last but not least, 3D printers capable of printing anything, almost, including human organs. Could this be the end of organ donors? And could we start seeing human being cloned out of a machine to discuss these amazing new technologies, their benefits, and their potential for abuse? I'm joined now by BTS producer Manuel Rapolo. Hello. Hi, Abby. How's it going? Hello, hello. Let's start talking about the proto, uh, pet proto robot. Let's, let's check this out. Okay, this is terrifying. <laughs> like, I, I don't know. I mean, I know that it has a lot of practical applications, which I want you to talk about now, but it's just, it's a really frightening image. What? It's a really, I mean, I think it's pretty cool. It looks like, it the, uh, really it cool. looks like the robot like from, uh, from RoboCop. And the, yeah, yeah you, can, you can even see it going upstairs, yeah. like going through all these yeah. narrow things. There's tons is, of practical. Can you imagine that coming into your house at night? I, I don't coming want to imagine it coming into my house at night. But it has a lot of practical applications to it. Um, I can imagine this being used uh, for firefighters, sure. for police officers officers, kind of like a uh, autonomous, and it is, it, it, to some extent it is an autonomous robot. It learns from its surrounding, it's it, um, probably see this in the future used for kind of disaster relief and hopefully not see it as kind of this like giant army of these <laughs> autonomous robots coming at you. So what, how much can it carry? Because I know that they're talking about using these things for the battlefield to, to carry giant, um, you know, yeah. tons of, of things and really transport things easier and stuff. Right, well there's there's another one that DARPA's been working on, it's actually it's called the Alpha Dog and this is the one uh, that has even more kind of uh, practical applications to it. Here's actually Oh my god, <laughs> no this is so frightening. You've it, seen I, this before, Yeah, right? they can push this dog over and it, look at how with, with ease. It can just, carry 400 pounds out. for 20 miles, you can so knock it over, uh, you can hit it with a car, it'll survive, it'll stand itself back it up. It really does look like something out of Star Wars, but I wanted to move on to the mind controlled prosthetics. I mean, this is an absolutely incredible um, invention, Manny. I mean, I don't think people really realize how how like in, I mean how amazing this really is talk about how this is different from prosthetics that we've seen in the past right uh, it's known as the robot arm now it's a, it's a prosthetic robot arm and I don't know if we have an image to show of it but it is different than any other prosthetic that we've seen uh, in the past right here, you can yeah. see it right here what it is this robot arm is actually uh, ha has a core that runs directly into your uh, motor cortex and it's a uh, connected through microelectrodes. And uh, the motor cortex actually uh, controls limb function in the human body. So whereas you know, maybe you would use muscles in the past to control maybe one or two functions in a prosthetic arm, this actually has almost full here's, control here's my of, question. Of, a, of an arm. What if someone hacked into this arm and, and started killing people? I mean, then you're like, it's my arm, it's not <laughs> you're, me. Now you're, that sounds like <laughs> Spider-Man. That sounds like Doc Ock from Spider-Man. I mean, I don't know, like well into the future, that seems like something that we could know, be possible. We know with every good invention, it could be used for bad and abused as well. But let's talk about something <laughs> that I, it's hard Coming to up. actually <laughs> consider how this could be used for abuse with it, the bionic eye. I mean, this is something that gives sight to the blind. Talk about how it adapts to your eye and, and, and evolves in that. Sure, this one is actually really, really cool. Ah, you can see a picture of it scary. right there. That's a microelectrode uh, that's implanted right uh, next to the, to the retina. And oh uh, what it does is that it takes, there's a camera mounted outside. There's an exterior camera that sends signals to this, uh, to this little electrode, which then runs down your optic nerve and into your brain. Your brain interprets this the same way that we interpret the light that we see as images 
changes and over time, I mean, it's not perfect vision, but over time your brain learns to adapt to these signals and your vision progressively gets, gets better. And the awesome thing about this is, is that it's actually FDA approved. So uh, these little things will slowly start yeah. making it into uh, American culture. Man. And just like hearing aids uh, yeah. at $100,000 a piece, but I mean, like everything else, it'll probably get cheaper as time goes by. Man, science is so cool. Let's talk about the robotic exoskeleton. This thing, it looks like a Halloween costume, but it's really an amazing invention. Um, talk about this. Sure. This one, uh, the, the photo that we have up right now, this was developed by NASA, but there's a number of these being developed. I know that MIT is working on some. Honda is actually working on the motor assist function. Of course, this is uh, Raytheon is working on a number of pro pro prototypes as well. Um, help with paraplegics uh, is probably the number one function, but you know, as with what it looks like it can do. Well, it just gives you superhuman ability Let's, to anybody that's you know, not when superhuman. I, when I look at this, I think of Iron Man. Um, what about what about some evil force taking these you robotic have a clip suits? Of Iron and, Man. Yeah, let's, let's look at this. I mean, what if this is the future? Look at this. I mean, it's ridiculous. It's, the, the fact that Raytheon is working yeah, on, on these right now. Yeah, that's what scares me, is that these defense corporations are investing in this technology. I mean, science is amazing. And of course, if we have the technology, we should be using it to help all these people um, and defects. But I mean, I really can't help but I wonder. I would want an Iron Man suit. I I want an Iron Man suit too, but I'm worried about it getting in the wrong hands, Manny. Let's talk about probably the most amazing, um, incredible invention of all, which is these three printers. They, okay, it's so insane to me that this is actually possible now. You can print not only uh, plastics or carbon material, I mean, but then you can print organs now, yeah. too. Uh, you can print pretty much anything. And we've known about these 3D printers and the fact that uh, they kind of print on a three-dimensional basis. You can print uh, just about anything, anything in your home that's made of plastic that you need replacements for, the bottom of your shoe breaks, uh, your pen breaks, just print out, print out a new one. The awesome thing about it is the ability that uh, science, uh, health researchers have found now that you can print human organs using stem cells. You layer the stem cells to mimic a human heart. Uh, the idea here is that eventually we're going to do away with the need for organ donors. We're going to need, uh, do away with the need for skin grafts. You can just uh, print out some skin for someone. And you know, if you're using the same tissue, there's no, re there's no possibility for it rejecting. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it leaves a lot of room for abuse as well. You, you mentioned that it can print just about anything. It can also print guns. Yeah, like all, the, all this talk of Congress banning guns or, or high-powered assault rifles. I mean, you can print it out. I mean, yes, it would be plastic, but I mean, I'm sure in time, maybe they can figure out how to, how to do that. So it really just shows how arbitrary all this stuff is when you can really print these things out. But Manny, also, if we're talking about human tissue and printing organs, what about people? What if eventually they have a printer that can just print a human being, a clone? Why not? 20 years ago, we That's heard... So I mean, is, is that wrong? <laughs> that, I, that, I don't think I'm the right I, person to ask on the morality of, of yeah. cloning humans through, through printers. But I mean, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, yeah. cloning a sheep was impossible. We've done that. We've cloned who knows how many other things. It might only be a matter of time before you see a little fetus come out of a printer. <laughs> Science is amazing. Thank you so much, Manny, for coming on. Breaking it down, Manuel Rapolo. Thanks, Abby. We are anonymous. We are legion. We do not forgive. We do not forget. Expect us.